There are two tax codes in the United States. People believe that it's one for the rich and one for the poor, but that's not the case. It's one for the informed and one for the uninformed. Our job at the Financial Enhancement Group is to help you be informed. We want you on the right page with the IRS. Go to yourlifeafterwork.com or call us at 800-928-4001. The Financial Enhancement Group is ready to help get you on the right side of tax planning with the IRS. Not tax reporting, not filling out the forms, the tax planning. How do we tell the IRS the best story we can for our financial journey? Again, it's yourlifeafterwork.com, 800-928-4001. Welcome to your retirement playbook. I'm Joe Clark, your host. So happy to have you along. Hope you're having an outstanding day. The theme of this whole show, so if you're listening to us on the radio, you've had four potential segments that you've been able to hear. If you're listening to us on YouTube, you're only seeing one channel where we divide everything into six categories. There are five critical elements, obviously. Your life after work, some people call the retirement plan, the annual tax planning, the third is the investment playbook, the fourth is the life happens, the fifth is the legacy plan. We have a channel for each of those and then one for charitable giving that we call The Better Giver. Uh, the Investment Playbook, don't forget if you haven't signed up, it's a free thing we send out every week called The Market Carver. Just go to yourlifeafterwork.com, get signed up for it, say, hey, I want The Market Carver. You'll get that, my weekly newspaper column, uh, a, a short video on elements in focus a couple times a month that come out that talk about some of the things that I'm talking about here on the show. So you can go to YouTube, and if you go to YouTube, please take the time to subscribe. Uh, they've got some crazy algorithm that says, based on the number of subscribers, uh, we're allowed to do certain things with the channel to make it more beneficial for all of you uh, and to be able to reach more people, for people to be able to share the information and such. So if, if you would be so kind, whether it's the Financial Enhancement Group, the financial tidbits that you have to join on Facebook, um, we'd love to have you there or subscribe on our YouTube channels at you know, Your Retirement Playbook, and then there's channels underneath of that for each of the five critical elements. One of the common questions we get about a financial journey is how do I get money out of an IRA early? Now, I'm actually just joking. Rarely do we get that question. The challenge is really the other way, and it's do I really have to take money out of my IRA or 401k? Um, rarely do we have somebody say I need to take it early, but things happen. And the IRS allows for that to happen. And, and there are things, a terminal illness, you, you lost your job. I mean, let's face it. We want an uneventful financial journey, but emergencies do arise. And you too shall get through this, likely, whatever this challenge that you're having is. One of those things that you can use is a 72T. I'm going to talk about the pitfalls and, uh, and the problems with it. Uh, so I'm going to make it sound all negative, but there is, it is, there is a reason to use them. So a 72T, if you go back and you're on YouTube, you can see my whiteboard, or blackboard rather. If you're in a 401k or a 403b plan, those are Department of Labor plans, you cannot do a 72T. You can, however, out of an IRA. Out of an IRA, and people say, well, they're the same thing. No, they're taxed the same way. They're all tax deferred unless you used a Roth option. Uh, but they are not the same thing. The top two are Department of Labor plans, the 401k and the 403b, and IRA is not. A 72T, and do not miss a word in this sentence if you're going to use it, says that you can take money out of an IRA without a 10% federal penalty provided you have substantially equal periodic payments unchanged for the greater of five years or age 59 and a half. You miss one word in that sentence, and you're in for a bad day with the IRS. Substantially periodic payments, substantial periodic payments. So, <laughs> see, I've been saying this for years. I used to make my Purdue students say it forever. Substantially equal periodic payments unchanged for the greater of five years or 59 and a half. Why would you do that? Well, let's say you're 50 and you've lost your job. Or you've got a terminal cancer. So those would, those would be two bad things. You need to get money out of your 401k, in, but you can't borrow money out of the 401k. You're no longer working there. You're laid off. So you take money out of the 401k, you move it to an IRA, and you start a 72T. Remember, you can have as many IRAs as you want. So you're only going to want to put money into the IRA, into the IRA that you're going to use, the 72T. And yes, before one of you ask, you can have multiple 72Ts also working. But in that, inside of that IRA, you only want to put the amount of money 
that you're going to take that you need to be able to fund the amount of income that you need. And you need to work with a qualified advisor or a CPA to be able to come up with what that number and those amounts are. But at age 50, at age 35, you can do an A72T. However, it's got to be substantially equal periodic payments. That means you're getting it monthly, quarterly, annually with not a lot of change. It can be a percentage of the money left in the account or a certain percentage or a certain amount of money that you're taking. Substantially equal periodic payments unchanged. Once you make that selection, unless the IRS gives you the ability to change, which they did in 08, by the way, uh, but not always, not every year, uh, you're stuck with what you chose 10 years out into the future. So if you were 35, right, you have to do that until you're 59 and a half. Substantially periodic payments unchanged for the greater of five years or 59 and a half, whichever is longer. Um, so if you're 56, you're waiting until 61 before you can make a change. If you're 50, you're waiting until 59 and a, ha and a half before you can make a change. You need to be aware of that. So there's pitfalls that are in here. Uh, this is an article that came from one of my friend, Andy Ives. Andy's also a CFP, accredited and in, in institutional fiduciary, uh, and one of the IRA analysts that I have a lot of respect for. Here's things that he wanted to put, uh, that he wanted to make sure that people understood and covered. He writes a lot about 72 Ts because, let's face it, most of you who are listening to this show uh, aren't in a period of time where you're having a bad day um, and, and a bad period of time where you may need income. That doesn't mean that you may not want to look at a 72T. Let's say something happened to Uncle Bill, and you're the long-lost nephew, and all of a sudden you inherit $10 million, and you decide you don't want to work for profit anymore. You want to fulfill your dream as a, a, as a not-for-profit worker uh, where you aren't worried about the income. So suddenly your income is dramatically less. You may or not do that forever, but you want to do it now. So you take the money that you had in your 401k, you roll it to an IRA, you start a 72T to get the income out of your IRA at a very low tax bracket. Remember, you have no other income at 50. You're not eligible for Social Security, right? You're, you're not unemployed. You quit your job. Uh, you're living off the money that Uncle Bill left you, right? So your tax rate is very, very low. The 72T eliminates the 10% federal penalty and lets you get money out of the IRA quicker and, and at a lower tax rate. So there are good reasons to use it as well, but you still fall under the same rules. So Andy wanted me to make sure that you understood 72T payments can begin it from it an IRA at any age, even if you're still working. That is true. You don't have to have lost your job. It doesn't have to be an emergency. It could be that you need the extra income because of, because of an emergency, or there could be a tax rationale to be able to do it. Again, proceed with caution here. 72T payments come from a company retirement plan are permitted only if 72T payments from a company retirement plan are permitted only if the person is terminated with employment with that company. So I told you you couldn't do a 72T out of a 401k or a 403b. If you've terminated employment per Andy, that's different. That is one of those things that's changed. We were discussing this with the CFP test, you know. I did, the, I did the CFP test in 96. This is why I have a team of people and why I read these articles and review the notes. Must continue for at least five years or 59 and a half. Trust me, they won't change that. And must be distributed at least annually. That's that periodic payment. If you get sideways with the rules, rot row, pay close attention. A 10% of penalty will apply retroactively to all distributions taken before age 59 and a half. Um, can't remember the guy's name. Curly hair, surfer, uh, worked for the phone company, comes to my office in Lafayette. They heard me on the radio and said, hey, I want to come in to, uh, to FEG. Told me he was doing a 72T. Told me he'd done it for 10 years. Told me he was going to be 59 and a half this, sh th this year. Uh, and that he was thinking about moving to California. That's all I can really remember because this was 20 years ago. 72T rules haven't changed that much. Substantially equal periodic payments unchanged greater of five years or 59 and a half. Um, he moved the money from, a, from one brokerage firm into the financial enhancement group, and we gladly accepted the account, made sure the 72T was still set up, and he goes, no, no, I'm 59 and a half. I don't have to worry about it anymore. That's why I made the change. And uh, he said, that's why I made the change when I made the change. And it's kind of like, okay. You know, and, you know, I, I didn't at tw in, in 2001 didn't have a computer where red lights would go off that he wasn't 59 and a half. He told me he was 59 and a half. 
I believed him. I figured people could do their own birthday. Well, it turns out he was 59 and four months. And the IRS imposed a 10% penalty on all distributions for the last 10 years because he didn't wait for two months. It is one of the most shocking things that's ever happened in my career. It's why I challenge, you know, when people come in and they, they will say, this is my birth date, my team is instructed to ask your age. And if the two don't coincide, we begin to ask more questions. Um, you know, and, and you learn from these mistakes. Don't, you know, take the wisdom that you can that you've learned in life, but the best wisdom is wisdom you can get from other people's experiences, right? It's cheaper. Uh, you know, I had to learn a very painful experience. Obviously, it didn't cost me. It cost him. You know, he didn't blame us or anything else. He, thought I he said, I thought it was close enough. Well, it's not close enough. It's 59 and a half, and the IRS has computers. They had them back then. They're certainly going to have them tomorrow. Please proceed with caution. So it's retroactive to all distributions, sometimes referred to as the recapture penalty. To avoid this, there are a handful of important 72 T's, don'ts to consider. Don't roll new money into the IRA account that has the 72 T coming out. Remember I told you you can have as many IRAs as you want. People think IRA stands for, it, the, it stands for Individual Retirement Account. It actually stands for Individual Retirement Arrangement. You can have as many arrangements as you like. Uh, both actions will be deemed as a modification of the account and will trigger the recapture penalty. So simply putting money in can create a problem. Think of the IRA with the 72T as a fragile antique bowl filled to the rim with a volatile and explosive liquid. Those who start a 72T must carry this delicate bowl with them through the, until the 72T term expires, handle it with extreme caution. Don't think you can withdraw more than that 72 p two payment structure allows. Sure, the IRS would get their taxes quicker if you took a larger distribution, but this deviation is deemed a modification. Don't handcuff all your IRA money. If the desired annual payout can be achieved with a lower starting IRA value, it's highly recommended that you split the IRA, the strict 72 reels, the handcuffs, will only apply to the IRA being annuitized. The IRA without the 72T can still be used for contributions, Roth conversions, rollovers, additional withdrawals, etc. There's about five or six other things that Andy added. If you want it, just go to yourlifeafterwork.com, request the article. More than happy to share. These are the kind of things that I go twice a year for three days to sit down with Andy and Ian and Ed Slot and the team to go over. Go to yourlifeafterwork.com. Get signed up for a Next Steps meeting.